let pi be a continuous map from the topological space X to the topological space Y. By the exercise 2.2.h, if script F is a sheaf on X, then we can define a push forward sheaf pi star F on Y by setting pi star F of any open subset Y to be the sections of F over pi inverse of V. And there will be naturally induced restriction maps. Since F itself uh, is a sheaf which satisfies the, the gullibility axiom and identity axiom, so we can also prove that pi star F also satisfies these two axioms. So pi star F is a sheaf. Here's a natural question. Given a sheaf G on Y, can we define a pullback of G on X along this map pi? And this new notion will be somehow due to the push forward sheaf. And we expect this push pullback and this push forward are a joint pair. This pullback will be our topic today called the inverse image sheaf. We will first give two definitions of this inverse image sheaf, one by the adjoint and another by direct construction. This pullback we desire will be named the inverse image. This lecture series will be based on section 2.6 the June 4th, 2017 version of Professor Rakio's notes. Now let's look at the first definition of the inverse image sheaf. Let pi from x to y be a continuous map. And pi star from the sheaf of sets over x to the sheaf of sets over y be the push forward factor. Then we define the inverse image, denoted pi inverse, to be the functor from the category of sheaves over y, sheaf of sets over y, to the category of sh sheaves of sets over x. That is left adjoint to pi sub star. Here, the category of sets can actually be replaced by other categories, like the category of abelian groups. We can illustrate this definition by a diagram. Here's a continuous map from x to y. Script F is a sheaf over x, and the script G is a sheaf over y. We can push script F to a sheaf over y by pi star. And the inverse image is a functor that sends g to a sheaf over x. This pi inverse is required to be left adjoint to pi star, which means that there is a 1 1 correspondence between morphism from pi inverse g to f and the morphisms from script G to pi star F. And we also know in the definition of adjoints, there are two associated commutative diagrams that we need to verify. This definition of inverse image is elegant but also abstract. We only know this pi inverse G is left adjoint to pi star, but we have no idea how to construct this pi inverse. So now we will give the second definition of the inverse image, defined by uh, direct construction. This definition by construction will be done in two steps. First, for any open subset U of X, 
we define a pi pre inverse of g over u to be the limit of g of v over the v's uh, containing pi of u. Note that this pi of u is not necessarily an open set, but those v's are all open subsets. By using the set theoretical interpretation of the co-limits, we can, we can explicitly write this definition by co-limits into uh, the, the set of equivalence classes. Okay, now let's show this pi pre inverse of g is really a pre sheaf on x. To this end, we first need to define the restriction maps. If open subset u prime is containing open subset u, we need to get map from pi pre inverse g of u to pi pre inverse uh, g of v, g of u prime. And here we, we need the, the universal mapping property for co-limits. Suppose pi of u is contained in v prime, which is contained in v. So we have this cone for co-limits with restriction maps and the map from g of v g v prime to the co-limit. At the same time, we notice that since u prime is contained in u, pi of u prime is also contained in pi of u. So there will be arrows from g of v and g of v prime to this second co-limit. Now we use the universal mapping property for this co-limit. By the universal mapping property, there's an induced map, this uh, black, black arrow with question mark, from this co-limit to this co-limit. And this is a map we want. The restriction from open subset u to open subset u prime. To show that pi inverse of g is really a pre sheaf on x, we also need to show the composition of two restriction maps is also a restriction map. Suppose we have three open subsets u double prime, u prime, and u. Each is containing the next. Then we get induced maps between pi pre inverse g of u, pi pre, in, pi pre inverse g of u prime, and pi pre inverse g of u double prime. And the composition of these two is same as the induced map from the first to the third. This is because if you look at this diagram, and you replace this uh, u double prime, sorry, if you replace this u prime to u double prime, then you will find the composition of these two arrows also satisfy the commutativity condition in here. So by the uniqueness part of the universal mapping property, the composition of th these two arrows is same as this arrow. So we have proved this pi pre inverse g is a pre sheaf on x. But the pre sheaf pi pre inverse g isn't necessarily a sheaf. And here's a non sheaf example. We take the topological spaces x and y to be discrete spaces x equal to a two point space and y equal to a one point space. That g to be a constant sheaf with respect to the two point set consisting of a and b. 
This is a constant shift over y. And the stru structure of this constant shift is very simple. The sections over the empty set will be just a singleton, and uh, the sections over singleton R will be a two-point set. One is a constant function at A, another is a constant function at B. And clearly, this G satisfies the glueability axiom and the identity axiom. So this G is a shift. Now we use Piper inverse to pull this G back to a pre-shift on X. By definition, this pi pre inverse g of u is a co-limit with respect to pi of u. And uh, in our case, it, it will become a two-point set consisting of precisely c sub a and c sub b when u is non-empty. Now let's show this pi pre inverse g fills the glueability axiom. We consider the open subset of two points, P and Q, to be a union of the singleton P and the singleton Q. We take C sub A from pi pre inverse G of singleton P and C sub B from pi pre inverse G of singleton Q. We know there are, there are sets of two points. We notice that the domain of C sub A is a singleton P, and the domain of C sub B is a singleton Q, and they have empty overlap, which means this equation is trivially true. But in this case, we cannot glue C sub A and C sub B together to an element in, or to a section in pi pre inverse G of two-point set with P and Q. Because you can check that in this case, the restriction map from the two-point set to one-point set are all identities. This is because when you glue C sub A and C sub B together, you can only have two choices, either glue them together to be C sub A or glue them together to be C sub B. However, the restriction maps from the two-point set PQ to one-point set either P or Q will be identity, as you can verify it from the construction in here. So, you cannot glue C sub A and C sub B together to get a section over the whole space X. Therefore, this uh, pi pre inverse G is not a sheaf. What can we do if this pi inverse pi pre inverse G is not a sheaf? We do the sheafification. We define pi inverse G to be the sheafification of pi pre inverse G. Now let's show that pi inverse is a functor from the shift of sets on y to the shift of sets on x. The fact that pi inverse is a functor follows from the facts that pi pre inverse and shiftifications are all functors. Pi pre inverse is a functor because basically because the co-limits are functors. And the shiftification is a functor because of the universal property mapping property of the shiftification. So their composition pi inverse is a functor.